Good day, everybody. This is Michael Leveris from jurisq.com, and we are a legal network of different attorneys, different states, different practice areas uh, that educate the public on frequently asked questions. And today we bring back Stephen Univer, a commercial real estate attorney from New York. Uh, Stephen, welcome back. We thank you for your time. Thank you, Michael. It's great being back. Yeah. And uh, we're going to talk about easements. We talked before on uh, what's involved in checking a title report. What is your job? What is your responsibility to check that your client is protected uh, in a title report? Let's talk today about easements. Easements are found in a title report, right? Uh, there are all different types. Let's talk about what are the most common ones and how they can affect your uh, property. So uh, easements across the board are really important for not only commercial real estate, residential real estate, but for leasing or anything of that matter. The most common types of easements in New York uh, and New Jersey are the driveway easements because a lot of properties are very close together. So you think that your property is this large, but it's actually this large mm -hmm. because you share 10 feet of space between two buildings and that 10, seven feet, seven and a half feet usually is for each person's backyard, which might've been a driveway at one point or a, a garage in the back that they changed or removed, that easement might not be able to be built on. So you wanna make sure that you have access to that easement. Building a fence, you have to do it with your neighbor. So all of these rules and regulations regarding easements. Another popular easement is light and air easement. Yeah, New York, we don't have, uh, sometimes these buildings don't give us a lot of uh, light. Um, so we want to make sure that you're not looking at another building when you open your window in the morning. Mm -hmm. So we get something called a light and air easement. Uh, that is extremely important to check. And I'll, I, I've had a lot of clients who are surprised that they're building up and they they start building their building. They're like, I'm building on my property. No, you can't build over, let's say, 30 feet because you're now going to screw up the other person's light and you just broke the law. You'll never get a certificate of occupancy on your uh, house. You can't sell it. You can't get a mortgage on it. You can't do anything with it. Yeah, that's very important to check because uh, you may go to an architect. You know how much square footage you can squeeze out of a property and you think you can build X number of stories, but it turns out you're going to impede somebody's light, right? And then that you, have, you actually can build much less, and that's really going to affect uh, your profits. Yes, and another ease, uh, two other easements that are really popular that uh, screw up people's investments is one is a lot of times building owners or old co-ops or old condos uh, give away antennas. And they really just lease property. I call it an easement, but it's really a leasing of a property to an antenna to Verizon or something like right. that. Yeah, that can potentially cut into your uh, uh, square footage. So that is one thing. And uh, the final one is really uh, restrictive covenants. Even though they're not easements, uh, a lot of neighborhoods, and I know Brighton Beach in Brooklyn is one of them, have areas where... Uh, from 1920, these are some of the oldest rules in the country where it specifically says that you're not allowed to build, let's say, a butcher shop on this street. Okay. Or I, recently I saw you're not allowed to have a daycare because people mm -hmm. who live there didn't want to uh, hear children, I guess. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. uh, these crazy archaic rules, and they're still valid. You actually have to sue in order to get it dismissed. Yeah. Uh, I actually heard of a case even uh, where somebody is uh, wants to develop a property and they have easement from 150 years ago that is written by hand and now you have to do a lot of work trying to decipher what it means so it's very important to not only to be aware that there are easements in the property right Stephen, but also understand what they mean every word could affect your project and profitability or even the saleability of your real estate and an attorney that is um focusing on real estate is the one to go to that knows how to read these uh, covenants, those these easements in a title report and work with a title company to really get a good grasp on uh, what they uh, state. Steven? That, that, that's 100% correct. And you want to make sure that, remember, your your box that you, you own, the plot of land that you own, 
unfortunately is still affected by your neighbors and the easement will affect your personal property. You want to make sure that you know how much you can do with your own property. Absolutely. Okay, let's end on those words of wisdom. Stephen, thank you so much for your time. And we're here to educate the public on various uh, frequently asked questions on commercial real estate. In our next session, we're going to talk about house partitions. How do you partition a house? And what do I mean physically, right? What do I mean cut the house in half? Or sometimes oh, maybe you do Sometimes have maybe. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that. Okay, until next time. Thank you. Great being here. Thank you. Thanks.